Hi guys, this is Laurel, and just a quick PSA about the video you're about to see. So this was a spur of the moment decision to make this uh, tutorial type video. So my uh, setup was quite angled, and that means that I got off camera a few times and there was some a bit of focusing issue. I still think you'll be able to um, see most of what I'm doing and understand what I'm doing or what I'm saying, but you will see at places where the focus was um, not great and I tend to veer off camera a little. So just keep that in mind as you are watching this. All right, I hope you enjoy, thanks. Hello, how are you guys? This is Laurel, Laurel with the Dabbling Hook and I had a couple of requests for a pattern for an Octo Lovey I just showed on Instagram and while there is not really a full different pattern around Octo, it's basically my same Octo with one little twist, not really a twist, just one little difference and it's attached to um, a Lovey and a Lovey of your choice, uh, basically a granny square. Um, mine, I happen to do a five point granny square, or I guess it's not a granny square anymore. Um, a five point lovey using the granny stitch. So, what I'm going to do is, like I said, it's the basic octo. So, what I want you to do if you've never made an octo before is go to the tutorial that I did for the octo. I will put a card or and or the link. Um, down below. The link will definitely be down below. Um, go to that, make the octo up to um, where you're done. Basically make the octo and when you're ready to start on the tentacles, come back and this is where we're going to start. Okay, so ready, set, go make your body. Okay, so once you've done that, um, you are, I use a three and a half millimeter or smaller hook. Lately I've been doing a 3.25 millimeter for my amigurumis. I don't know if it's something with my tension or what have you. Stress, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but for this one I used um, Big Twist Anti-Pill. It is a heavy four. They actually have a six on here. It is not a six at all. It is a five at best, a heavy four. So I use that. And, but you can use any yarn that you want for the amigurumi. Again, with that, I use a three and a half millimeter and um, give a nice tight, um, again, your tension, but nice tight fabric. And for the tentacles, because normally with when I do the octo, I use the same hook for the tentacles because you want something nice and firm because it's going to need something for support to sit on um, or stand on or what have you. But because this is going to be part of a lovey and you want something a little bigger um, for the little hands to be able to hold on to somewhat. So you can go all the way up to um, two or three sizes bigger. Uh, I haven't tried the six millimeter, but I may. Right now I am going to use a five and a half millimeter for, um, for what I'm considering worsted weight. Again, they're considering this a number six and asking for a nine millimeter. No way. Not um, you know, if you need something drapey, maybe, but this is not this is not a number six, my opinion. So anyway, you are going to and I hope this is focusing because you know, setup is very iffy over here. So you are going to attach to your first and this is a little um what do you call it? extended because I started it and then I decided to you know film this little tutorial so I took it out. Now you are going to follow again pretty much the same uh, instructions for the octo from from the tutorial pattern but for the tentacles I'm just attaching my slip stitch here my slip knot you are going to chain four and that's three four and I'm going to just remove that this is from me making it and chain four and do five treble crochets in that same stitch. 
Okay, five trebles. Now when I hold my octo to do this, I tend to squish and, you know, I manhandle it pretty much. So you're going to have to do some reshaping when you're done, but that's okay. Let's see, four, five. And this is just the tail poking out. We'll fix it later. So five in that first stitch. And I, when you're doing the, the legs at this point, you should have um, 24 loops um, that are remaining from doing the actual um, following the tutorial. And obviously that's divisible by eight, um, three times, So and you want eight legs. So you're going to use three stitches, three of those loops per leg. Pull that out of the way. So in that first one, you've done five treble crochets. In the next one, you're going to do three more. Oops. And I hope I'm not coming off camera. I won't know till I'm editing, but three more. Okay, so now you have a total of eight treble crochets over two stitches, or two of the, the loops. And you're going to join it the way I do the popcorn. I do the lazy popcorn. I don't take off the hook, turn it, and then go. I just turn it, grab, and close it, and you still have a pretty similar popcorn. Now, because this is a larger hook and um, longer stitches, the treble, it's it's not very firm. So if you were doing a regular octo and you sit it down, it would squish. But that's okay because this is going to be attached to a levy. So you want that fullness. And that's why I do it over two stitches because you're looking for more fullness, more fluff to it. And in the third stitch, you are just going to do a single crochet. Okay? So over three stitches, you have, you chain four, do an additional five treble crochets in that stitch. And the next stitch, you do three more treble crochets for a total of eight. You close it to form the popcorn. And in the next stitch, you do a single crochet. All right? Now you're going to start the next tentacle. So in the next loop, you slip stitch. Okay? And you do the same thing. You chain four. Oops. As long as I don't lose my... Um, my stitches. One, two, three, four, and five treble crochets. And I usually don't count as I go. I just put them in and then I go back and count, see if I have enough, or maybe I went over. So two, four, five. So that's in that first one where you slip stitch. In the next one, you do three more. And the last one. And then without taking out the hook to do the traditional popcorn, you just turn towards the back, you slip stitch in between that chain four and the first treble crochet to close it, and you got your popcorn, a lazy popcorn. All right? And you have, again, that more fluffy, fuller tentacle. And nothing that's sturdy that you really need for sitting down. You just need it to show that the uh, tentacle is there, the fluffiness. So, in the next one, you're going to single crochet. So that completes the three stitches that you use per tentacle. All right? So, slip stitch into the next, and do the next tentacle, and I will see you at the end. Okay, so I have done my last one I've attached, I'm just going to cut that out. I've already chained one, snug it up, and weave in the tail, and you can see you've got a little octo with a lot of, a lot fluffier of um, tentacles. Now, I mentioned earlier that you wanted something that was a little fluffier, um, that it doesn't have a lot of structure, but I really think it would work. Um, you're going to have to, like I said, it gets squished, so you're going to have to reshape it when you're done. And you can see that it's much bigger than the normal Octos. And it will actually hold up because it's like resting here and because they're so tight together. Um, it would work for a normal um, Octo. Uh, but generally, I don't have the tentacles 
that big, but you know what? That's a statement. That could work as well. And hopefully you're not picking up the background noise because Father Minion just got home. So, all right. So there's that. Weave in your tails. And then um, two more things. I'm going to show you how I start my um, five-point uh, lovey. I'm sure you guys are very familiar with that. And then I will try to show how I do the... Um, the eyes it's a lot of trial and error with uh, doing the facial expression so if yours isn't coming out exactly just you know um, just keep doing it trial and error all right and let me show you one more um, thing that I do for the faces so give me a second okay so another thing I do to help me at least visualize what I want for the face is and hopefully this is going to focus Come on, work with me. Not so much. What I do basically is I draw out what I want to see. Let me see if I come closer. Can you focus? There you go. So I draw out some faces. I just draw a circle. doesn't have to be a perfect circle, obviously. And I draw different faces to see what speaks to me at the time. And then I try to uh, transfer that as close as possible don't go for perfection because you know that gives a character one nobody's face is perfect too and you know it makes it more interesting so um, I draw out the faces and I pick one and I try to um, stitch as close to that face as possible so that's one thing that helps but there's still a lot of um, stitching and pulling out when I do it so just FYI okay so there's that what I do with the faces so let me um, show you how I start the or how I do the um, the lovey part and again you can use any lovey that you want you can make it as big or small as you want um, and what else yeah I've used corner to corner um, and just made a square I've I typically do tend to stick with um, with a granny square though so uh, it's just easier and simpler and it's just you know no one's gonna pay that close attention but you can get as decorative or not as you want with it so one thing I do with the with when I start the granny square or whatever lovey that I do the center in the first few rounds I try to get it to match whatever um, color I use for the octo so you know they kind of merge into each other and then you can add different colors as you see fit it also helps with sewing so if you're sewing it and you need to add extra stitches because your sewing isn't just right. If you use the same um, center of the uh, the lovey as your octo, then your stitches won't show as well. So there's bonus for that. Just a little tip, right? So I will um, come back and show you how I start that up. Okay, so for the granny square or the granny five point or whatever you call it, I always start with the double magic loop. I wrap once, twice around two fingers, go under the double loop, grab the working yarn, and make a chain. And I'm going to be working over the double loop and the tail. And I start, I almost never start my anything with a chain. I start with a standing double crochet or a chainless double crochet or the stacked single crochet which replaces so what I do for this one I pull up a length to a double crochet length <laughs> and if you heard that that's minion one playing video games being extremely loud so oh well anyway pull up a loop to um, double crochet length I hold on to the one on the hook go under the loop and into the, the circle pull up a loop bring it up yarn over pull through and pull through two makes like a nice fat double crochet so you don't get that gap or you could do the chain starting chain then I add two more I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Chain two, three more double crochets, chain 
chain two and repeat that three more times until you have five total um, groups of double crochets so I will meet you at the end okay so I have my last one two three four five I have my five I've chained two and I'm going to close that double um, loop magic ring so I just squish everything out of the way I pull on the tail until one of them starts um, drawing in and you'll see the shorter one so you grab the shorter one and you pull and you pull until it's closing the ring as you pull it as much as you can without breaking and then you grab the tail and then you finish pulling and it's a nice secure pull I've never had any issues with it for the most part except if you have a um, very slippery yarn like Karen Simply Soft or something like that sometimes I make a couple of knots after I've tightened it I make a couple of knots and you know cinch it all the way down um, it gives it more um, what's the word more static uh, or resistance I guess if it tries to come out there'll be some that knot will be in the way but I've never had um, any problems with it and to close it um, I changed my last chain two but what I tend to do is instead I take one of those chains out oops it's getting in the way and I do a single crochet to close it instead of a slip stitch so I'm just trying to get under both loops and I do a single crochet and what that does is it brings you to the middle I like to start my corners with the first uh, with three double crochets go around do the rest and when I come back at the end I do the last three double crochets in there um, to close it out that way I'm always basically starting in a corner instead of to the side I don't like that line that goes up um, on the side uh, it, to me it hides better if you always start in the corner and I don't like slip stitching over to the center either so just a personal preference all right again so now I'm in the corner I'm going to start there okay have a little interruption so here we go so I'm in a corner I'm gonna do my chainless double crochet add two more Okay, when I come back around I will complete this corner and I also 99% of the time I don't chain between clusters I only put the chains at the corners so I will just go directly into the next corner chain two complete that corner Oops. by the way I'm also by the window trying to get some natural light as long as possible so if you hear any a lot of car movement and stuff that is why again not chaining two not chaining one in between I'm just going right into the next corner three chain two and another three double crochets okay so finish that and I will meet you around to put that last three double crochets in we are at the last um, or back at the beginning to complete that uh, first one so again we don't chain one just go in and add three double crochets and instead of chaining two and slip stitching I chain one and I am going to single crochet and me doing this is just um, just pulling up the uh, other side of the loop so that I can go under both because it gets a uh, little pulled out of shape sometimes so and then I single crochet so I am back in the corner right right in the center of that corner and you just keep going as you would do a normal um, granny square um, blanket or square and you have your five points and you just change colors as you see fit I am going to end up adding this color in just for just to break up the yellow a bit but I would add maybe another round of um, yellow to make it you know to have this sit squarely just on yellow areas so that when I sew if I have to you know do any 
damage control with my stitching you won't see it because it'll all be the same um, the same color alright so that would be the five point again I start in the corner with a chainless double crochet I don't add the single crochets in between clusters and I do a chain two in the corner I like mine less flowy as possible um, you know it may feel stiff depending on what hook you use but it generally um, loosens up a bit once you wash it and stuff and just from general use but all right so do that and complete yours and um, I'm not sure just for the the sake of this tutorial if I will do um, the full blanket that I'm going to use or a lovey blanket but I will come back and either show you my stitching you know how to attach but I'll try to show you that um, and then I will try to show you how we do the eyes or how I sew on the eyes so you need a little whatever color you decide to use typically go for about little I typically go for black or maybe a brown maybe I even use this because this will show so it'll be a good um, contrast fluff um, you know or if you want to be like sometimes I would use pink or whatever something that has a bit of a contrast where it's not going to get lost in here because yeah? sometimes using black it may just be too stark of a contrast so this might work if you want just a softer look all right so stay tuned for the next part alrighty so I lost the battle with the light so I had to turn on the ring light so hopefully this is not too bad so for this is where I got on here and I actually ended up switching to the larger hook because it was a little too stiff for me and even though these are the same yarns um, or that way this is I never told you the color this is taupe and I believe I forget what the other one was I guess gold um, the yellow is even though they're the same yarns the yellow is much thicker than the taupe the taupe definitely has a softer feel to it so um, it's just it was a little too stiff so I upped the hook anyway I'm gonna leave it there for now and I'm going to try to show you the eyes what I usually do is I just get scraps I have my bin of you know um, ends from when I've woven in or just you know a little yard or so of leftover yarns and I usually dig in that for scraps to do the eyes or small things so I had a length of black and basically I just separated the plies um, into two sections so it's a four ply and I have two here and two there and I'm gonna use that um, I usually try to use something thinner for the eyes and the facial features so oh the reason these are here I use my octos as pin cushions a lot uh -huh, you can see this one Deb made for me it's a uh, tape measure um, so there's that that one's always by my sewing machine and this one is um, just around for when I need to pin amigurumis or anything else this one is on my desk but yeah it was just scrap yarn and I think this is um, Bernat home deck so I was just seeing what it was like so yeah there's that anyway for the facial features um, I half and half I mark the locations where I want to put the eyes I'd say more 74 70 30 I eyeball it but for you guys once in a while I do mark um, if things aren't working out for me so I just mark basically this is where um, how high I want the eyes and this is where it's going to start where it's going to end start and end because um, sometimes I find even when I don't mark it and I'll do the first eye fine and when I go to do the second one they're usually not symmetrical and I never aim for like perfect symmetry but you know something close and most times it's way off and that's usually part of the uh, you know ripping out and doing over that I have to do because uh, the second one it's kind of like doing booties or gloves the second one never comes out the same size so that's what that's for and I still have to weave in my end so I usually um, try to use a regular darning needle to do that and usually a thinner one 
is better. Uh, you can go in between the plies more and the bigger ones you know will put more of a gap between stuff so I try not to use those. So I use that um, and sometimes depends on how big uh, the amigurumi is uh, I try to use these doll needles. I'm, I'm in search of finding the perfect size um, or length doll needle so I like the size the the thickness of this one but I prefer the length of that one and this one is too thick for me and this one is too long for me so yeah I'm looking for you know like a six inch one that has like good uh, leverage because with these what did I do with it with these sometimes when you push it through you're like squishing and fighting to make sure you you can get it out uh, where you need it to come to where are these these you know they're long enough that you have grip and they can go far and wide within here so just some of the tools that I use but I'm just gonna try using this for today so I always start from the bottom usually and I find somewhere that has a nice gap where I can put my needle in because you are gonna have to go in and out of the same space so I find a good gap and I go up and now this is very rudimentary because like I said it's trial and error and I am by no means an expert I just do what looks good to me so I come up to where the first beginning oh, beginning point is and that's the thing with the shorter needle it's a little more work on the hands to get it just where you want to go so once I have that oh, I hope I'm on camera once I have that coming out of the first space I take that pin out and I pull up the yarn when you unply the yarns you have to be very careful with it because they um, they lose stability a lot especially if you you um, separate it and use just one ply by the second or third pull through it'll start like pulling apart like it's roving or something so that's why I like to use at least two strands so I have it coming out of the the starting point I have a little bit of a tail where I'll do a knot and then what I do then I try to take it and form it like how I think I'm gonna like it you know bringing where it's gonna stop to the other um, needle and you're gonna definitely hear life noises because minion 2 now is in his hungry phase so there will be noises so I bring it up and I try to shape it how I think I want it to arch okay and then if this is good enough you know sometimes you may want it like taller or you know not as curved however you whatever I'm feeling basically at the time or if I'm trying to match my drawings like this one here is not as arched but this one is a little more arched so depends and an upturn eye or a sleepy turn eye depends but I'm not going for the sleepy eye right now so again you're in at the beginning you shape it to about the size that you want right coming to where it ends and then you turn it however you need to to be comfortable to maneuver okay and then I go in to where I need it to come out and then I go up towards the middle of that arch oops don't poke through the, the threads and I pull it up and see here you have your arch and if you pull it up Oop, I got in between some some strands there you go so if it's too high then you're gonna need to pull it back out and you know bring this down a little further but I'm just gonna leave this here for now All right and you can take that other one out and now you need to secure this point here so because you came in from in front and it's coming out here and you pull it up you're gonna need to come go over that arch and go in through where you came out right and you either can go directly to where the next eye is going to begin which is here to come out sometimes if I think it's too thin then I'll go back and try to um, <sighs> I'll go back and try to like overlay it to make it a little thicker but I'm just gonna leave it at that for right now so I go out to where the next eye is gonna start I take the pin out pull it out and I use my hand to kind of shape where I want it to go 
to hold it in place and again doesn't always work out but I think that's good enough and there's the first eye give it a little tug to make sure it's where you want it to be and then you do the same thing so sometimes in my rush I don't pay attention to what I did the first time so what you want to do is your this is one row here and I went up two rows so this is one row and the top of it this is the next row and the top of it so I know that I'm doing the eye over two rows so now that I'm back over here I will position it two rows up and down to try to match okay go into where it's ending and come out in front oops come out in front oops I just I just split the ply okay and this is where having a little longer needle would help too and then you just snug it and does it look semi okay try not to go for perfection because that will hinder you in the worst way it'll have you pulling out and starting over until your your yarn is frayed and your project is all messed up from having to go in and out all the time alright so you have that one here because you came in through the front you want to go on the back to secure it and unplying the yarn it tends to curl up on itself a lot so just be aware of that and it gets stuck in the needle so you so you want to secure it so you go to where it came out of and so if I'm all done and I'm satisfied with that and I'm not say I'm not doing eyebrows or eyelashes I would just go to tack it down and come all the way out through here where I'm going to tie a knot to finish off but because I'm going to do um, eyelashes I'm just going to go to the point here at the edge and again use your finger to get it where you need it to be before you pull tight and sometimes you have to massage things a little you know and if you're going to tug pull gently at a time because if you just yank you could break the yarn you can distort the stitches and all that yada 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 okay so there's the beginning of the eye so to do the eyelashes again sometimes I draw it out to see how I want it doesn't always come out the way obviously I drew it but I'm just sometimes I usually do three lashes but I'm just gonna do two um, normally if I'm doing three I go straight across for one a little angled for two and a little more angled for three but for this one I'm gonna go a little angle to begin with so I go up here and so this will be oops this will be for the first one a little angled and because I want the next one to come up a little here I just go up to where I want the oops a little angled Oop. A little angled and then I go up to where I want the other one to be and I tug so this first one's a little angled and I'm at the starting point for the next one I just come down here and I need to do the other lash if the if the thread is long enough or the yarn is long enough I go into where I want it to come out so that it will form the lash and then I go all the way over to the next one and again this is where a longer needle would help because now I have to squish it to get it across pull gently at first and there's the eye okay normally I think I'd like this a little less um, pointy but we're gonna leave it for now okay so now I'm at the other side I think I have enough yarn to to get it and this is where not reaching for perfection comes in handy because I can never get two of them to look the same so again you turn it however you need to to get things going so I want it a little angled at first Oop, and I just lost my needle <laughs> it fell and I don't know where it went I didn't even hear it clank, so it's somewhere. One second. All right, found it. And I'm having a hot flash. <laughs> okay. So, I want this one a little angled. So, 
turn it this way would work better for me. So a little angled, and you determine how far you can have the long lashes or short. So, and you know, I may count over how many stitches I went, or I just eyeball it. And this will be a little angled right here, and then I come up to where I want the second one to be. Pull it, go down to the beginning, and this is where I would go come all the way out here back into the original hole oops almost lost it there it is so there you go and if you pull too tight you can just push the needle through and reshape things reshape things but yeah there you go sorry about the angles and if I'm off frame but my uh, setup is very uh, iffy but there she goes I think I'm going to leave this one, but I would like, would have liked it to be less pointy for this one and more, um, more of an arch rather than a, you know, questionable lift. But yeah, so that's that. Don't be afraid to, um, take it out and redo it a couple of times if you need to. I do highly recommend drawing things out to see, you know, to get a better idea of what you, what you're going to want like that. I'm partial to this one here. So, so that's that on the eyes. Alright. I once in a while do eyebrows, not often, but I do like the lashes. And then, for the mouth, I'm going to need more yarn. So, same thing, it's trial and error. Find another hole where I can, big enough that I can go in and out. And I don't usually mark the mouth. I just go in, leave a length so you can tie, and then I just do it by hand. And this is like, like that. Do I want a small mouth or am I going to want a wide mouth? Do I want it going off to the side? You decide what you want. And I think I want to start it a little farther away. And I like to go through um, the stitches instead of between the stitches because I think it looks better. Less of a hole. All right, so it's a little wider and then I do that. Nope, I don't like that. A little more like that. So I just go in where I want it to end, come down. And usually for the mouth, I have to do two tacking points. Like that. I came in through the front, so now I have to tack it down on the outside. And then I go directly across. Oops. Tug gently, so it pulls that side down. And because I'm here, I go underneath it. And now it tacks it down. And then you can rearrange as you see fit. Okay, oops, I'm way off camera. All right, I'm at an angle, so I tend to move where my arm is comfortable, and that's usually off camera. All right, so I don't know if you saw that, but let me do that again without splitting. Okay, when I tap this side down, I brought the yarn over from underneath came out underneath the smile. I go th underneath the smile so I can catch it and tack it down. So now I'm going to go on the outside, tack it down, go back to the beginning, and again pull gently at first so you don't overly distort, and there's the smile. A lot of people don't put smiles. To me, it just it brings it all together. The eyes look great, but to me, adding the smile just is that final touch that it needs. So there's that. Okay, so I'm going to quickly try to show you how I do my um, attaching to the lovey. Um, I'm not going to tie these yet. I will do all the finishing. Ooh, fluff flying around afterwards. So. I'm going to lightly 
show you how I tie it all together so I'm just gonna leave this there for now technically you can leave this all here but you need to tie knots so that it doesn't get pulled out easily but for now because it's gonna get sewn through this you could do that but we won't do that we'll be neat and professional all right you decide where you want um, it to face I like it always to face a point even if it's a square I like to try to angle um, the face towards one of the points so I will put it on again yellow to yellow that way any stitching that you're doing it's not going to show any mistakes you might do in your stitching not as bad so her face is pointing here and then I just hold it on turn it over and I just pick a row to stitch on so the tentacles are here where they were attached this is like the if you touch it these this is like the firmest part of oops the firmest part of the tentacle here oops this is in the way so right here is a good firm place to attach because if you try to attach here it's going to be hard to get your needle like once this is on to get it way into here so I try to attach it here where the tentacles are attached to the body so again have it facing one of the angles you center it, turn it over, and I had a needle threaded, okay, with the yellow, and right here is where the tentacles are. So I would just use as a guide, I would use like a row on the, um, a row on the lovey as my guide of where to stitch so I don't go all off kilter. So I go in and in through the levee into the tentacle. I can feel I went to the tentacle. Pull up. I leave a little tail so I can tie a knot and hide it. And then, this is where I came out, I go behind it and come out in front. I think that's like, what's it called? A running stitch? I think. There's that and that's pretty nice and firm there. Then I go behind it again, come out, and I try to use that row as my guide to go all the way around. Okay, and I just turn as I go. And every once in a while, you want to into the lovey, into the octopus, and come out. You want to turn it over to make sure your stitching is picking up where you want it to pick up. Okay and put it down and make sure you're not going off kilter because I am famous for I will pin things and I'm sewing along and by the time I'm done it's nowhere where I started so just every once in a while stop and if you need to move it a little bit and these do come in handy a little these long ones if I find that it's moving too much I will situate it turn it and kind of down the middle try to hold it in place Okay, without poking yourself. <laughs> right, so at least that keeps it there, and then you can just keep going around. And when it's done, it should be nice and attached, like that. A little more flowy, though, if I had used a bigger um, hook for this. But there you go. And you get the big, fluffy tentacles that's really prominent. All right. It's more tactile for the little ones. But they can also just grab this by, you know, by an end and go. So yeah, that is the Octo Lovey. All right. I hope that was helpful. This, I should have said in the beginning, was for Rose and Maya. Rose likes crochet and Maya Morales because they were bugging me on Instagram. <laughs> for a, a pattern um, I may just I may or may not you know I keep saying about patterns that I'm half working on things but you know life gets in the way and writing patterns is hard guys it's it's a lot it's hard to take what you're thinking and what you do almost um, automatically and try to put that on paper for somebody to understand and have it be clear because you know we 
by doing it, you think in shortcuts. You know, like, what this means and that means, but somebody needs to be able to really clearly understand it, and it's hard to put that on paper. So, um, that takes a lot of time. And when I do stuff, I self-edit myself so much that it just takes forever. So, anyway, um, I see that I'm going to have to pin this because I'm already shifting sides. So, but... But again, don't go for perfection. The little imperfections give it its own character. So, yeah. So I'll finish, um, one, tying this mess up and making it neat and tying a knot a few times and then passing it through so it gets hidden inside and then finish the attachment. And I'm going to add a few more rows, a couple more rows to this for the lovey. All right. So, Rose, Maya, I hope that helps. Alrighty, I will talk to you guys later.